If you got your Bibles, we're going to start in Hebrews chapter 4. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 4. <clears throat> and um, I just want to share some thoughts just to get you thinking before we jump into the outline. We're looking at spirit, soul, and body. And today is, I think, what, session 5, 6? Six, session 6. And this is kind of like part 2 of last week's Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, so this kind of will bring a conclusion to that little thing, that little series there within the series. Uh, this one's called Salvation or Self-Help. Uh, basically, God's way is transformation. There's no other way He designed for us to experience life is through transformation, not any type of anything you can do or produce on your own, basically, which is self-help. So salvation is not self-help. Salvation is about transformation. So, we're, and, and let me just repeat this again. <clears throat> There's a lot of stuff you will you'll think, hey, we covered that, a little bit of that, you know, this year, this last year. But we're looking at it now through this lens, which is really going to help you or solidify the truths we've already learned. We're not going to go back completely and hit everything, but you're going to see some um, things that I'll repeat that we already went through. But... You'll see it through this lens, and it'll, I'm telling you, it'll, it'll make it like night and day. Things will start clicking uh, when you look at it through this lens. All right, so understanding spirit, soul, and body. Why? Because it will unlock the spirit realm so you can experience who you are and what you have in Christ. If you don't know this, it will be difficult to unlock that spirit realm because you'll be stuck right here. Do you remember a series I did called Stuck in Humanity? I don't know. It was probably back in 2014, maybe 2015. <clears throat> but I several, you'll see it on, the, on our YouTube channel, but it's called Stuck in Humanity. And what that is is people that stuck here. They don't know who they are here. You'll be surprised that a lot of Christians do not know how to access the Spirit. And then if you ask them, what does Paul mean when he says, walk in the Spirit that you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh... They can tell you that. Oh, I know that. Okay, well, explain it to me. And then you'll get, like, a, their eyes will look like a deer's caught in a headlight. They don't. They just know how to say it, but they don't know how to do it. So, anyway, that's what it means by being stuck in humanity. You're living out of here and manifesting it through your body, and you're not walking in the Spirit, although you're born again, but... In the fallen nature, your spirit was in like in a coma, dead. But as a new believer, and you ignore the spirit called grieving and vexing and resisting, all that you're making him not operative. And so he need, and he walk, and that's just why you walk by faith. If you're not faithing in the spirit, there's no way to access him but by faith. That's it. Trusting and looking to him. So he can manifest the life of God in us and who we really are, our spirit and his one here, in here so he can manifest that. So if you're, if you're wanting to know why we're doing this, it will unlock the spirit realm to you so you can experience who you are and what you have in Christ. If you do not understand spirit, soul, and body, you will instantly be set up for confusion, frustration, ending, of course, in unbelief. Because you're wondering, you ever wondered why? There's a part of you that can be evil and then another part that can be good. Or why you just come out of church loving God and everything's great and then road rage hits. And your wife says, I can't believe you're acting this way. You just got out of church. And you're like, yeah, what? why am I like that? What's happening? And then what we do, well, I'll just try again. Or we think, I'm just not a good Christian. But you don't understand there's nothing wrong with you. You simply came out of church in the spirit, engaged the natural physical realm here that caused you to be in the flesh. Because again, let me. When Paul talks about flesh, he's referring to one or both of these soul and body. And of course, when he's talking about spirit, he's talking about God and you, one in spirit. All right. So the spirit realm cannot be accessed by your soul or your body, the natural realm. So you can't access the spirit realm from here. Let that sink in. Remember what this is. Mind, 
the emotions, willpower. So you cannot access the spirit realm by doing things. You can only access the spirit realm by turning to the spirit. And that's faith. There's where it, it has to be faith. So faith accesses the spirit that accesses the spirit realm. You cannot use your mind, emotions, and will to access God. He will not, God will not speak to here unless he's speaking to here through here, the spirit. Make sense? <clears throat> when you behold the word of God, let's see, if you want to, okay, here's the spirit realm. Now, <coughs> excuse me, if you want to know what that spirit looks like, who you really are, because this is the real you. This is the real you. You want to know what that looks like, you, then you have to look to Jesus because remember, as he is, so are we. So I know that's hard to, I know that's hard to get, but you have to see as Jesus is, so am I. Now, how come I lost my temper? Do you understand? You getting why you're losing your temper? Because you're living out of the soul, which is your mind, emotions, and will, rather than someone pulling out in front of you and you turn to the Lord. Don't respond. Don't respond to, to these outward stimuli. You respond to the Spirit, and then you all, and the Spirit will give you kindness. All the fruit comes out of the Spirit. And then you are able to deal with life as it comes at you spiritually, not carnally. So that's another word for the flesh. You'll see that when we get to the outline, I, I, I believe. But let me get to the let me get through these. Um, comments here, these bullet points here. So um, when you behold the word of God, you're basically beholding who you are in the spirit. Whatever that word says you are, you don't, you're, it's not your job to become what that word says. It is who you are. So how many Christians look at the word, oh, I got to do that. Oh, I got to do that. And, the, and Jesus said, no, the word is a mirror showing you who you are. Now believe it. Don't try it. Now begin, you know, become it. And that's, when revelation comes like that, you're not struggling anymore. You're resting in who you are, and then you're, you're becoming who you've all, already been all this time. So that's why <clears throat> it's important to understand who you are. Not who you're trying to become, but who you are. So you can be transformed now to the degree that you renew your mind. In other words, if you're not renewing your mind, then you're not being transformed. So let's back up a second. What part of you here is being transformed? Your soul, your soul. Yeah, it ain't here because this is perfect. Okay? This is not being renewed. This is not being transformed. It is this guy, the inner man. This is the outer man. This is the inner man. This is the new man. <laughs> so a lot of people doesn't, doesn't distinguish that. This is what's being transformed. Remember I gave you the analogy, well, God does, that as Israel is pushing the enemy out of the land of Canaan, we're pushing the enemy out of our mind, emotions, and will. And the more your mind's renewed, the more you're pushing him out, the more territory, and which is transformation, metamorphosis, that's taking place. So there'll be a day that you won't turn to the Spirit when road rage hits, because he's conquered that part of your life, I'm no longer an angry person. And you just respond out of transformation. But those areas that you're not transformed in yet, you turn to the Spirit for the strength and help for that time until you conquer those areas. And really, you've already conquered them in your spirit, man. It's now pushing the enemy out. So let me back up a minute. So you, I, I, I got to make sure you get this. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with the soul. It's the soul has been um, afflicted, influenced, educated by the world and by the flesh and the devil. So that's the three enemies, the world, the flesh, and the enemy is constantly beating on this. And he's getting mindsets and beliefs and all that. So this, this is a result of the fall. But you're born again, and now we're going to recover 
the soul. We are in the process of recovery by pushing the enemy out and becoming in our soul who we already are in our spirit. So the real you does not need to be changed, does not need to be worked on, you're not a work in progress, but the soul is in a recovery mode where you're driving the enemy out by the renewing of the mind which results in the transformation. Does that make sense? So we are not in the process of getting anything from God because we have everything from God right here. And that's a big thing. How many Christians are out there trying to acquire things from God or trying to fix things that has already been fixed by the new man? So, at the very moment you're born again, your spirit is as perfect and complete as it will ever be throughout all eternity. And after being born again, the life of a believer is one of renewing and releasing. Renewing and releasing. That's what you're doing. You're renewing the mind by releasing the spirit and the life of God in there. All right? So, after being born again... It's a, it's a matter of renewing and releasing, which is called recovery. When you get a revelation, it will manifest in your soul from your spirit. And the spirit is the real you. All right? So um, the believer is in a recovery mode. Now let's get to the outline here. All believers, like Paul, can and are really commanded to walk in the spirit. Now that means Paul is saying don't ever walk and live from this realm. That's why Isaiah says his thoughts are above your thoughts and his ways above your ways. So whatever you are doing in, the, in your head where do you know how many thoughts you have per day? I read this. 30,000 thoughts a day run through that head. And you might as well just consider them all to be wrong. So how much time do we waste in bed at night thinking about things? What am I going to do if that happens? And we strategize our lives, our businesses, our hobbies. Our, and it's like, it, if you really understand how fallen and out of whack the mind is in comparison to the mind of Christ, then you will turn, rather than sit there and waste all that time, you turn to the Lord and God, Lord, you've already got this figured out. And I know you're going to reveal to me what I need to know in these matters. I'm going to bed. And you just, you just saved yourself a lot of anxiety and fear and worry and frustration laying in bed at night. <clears throat> and that's, but, that, but the soul seems to think it knows better. It thinks it knows things, and it really doesn't. So, so Paul commands <coughs> for the believer to walk in the Spirit. Now, unfortunately, many are controlled by the flesh, the soul, as though not dead and raised to newness of life. They act as if they're not even born again. They claim it, but they don't act it because they don't know it. It's not even so much as they're in rebellion, it's just they just don't know it. So many do not understand the death and resurrection through the lens of spirit, soul, and body. But Paul in 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3, here he divides Christians into two classes of people, carnal or fleshly or spiritual. So that's it. Either And, and, and it's not like you're one and you need to go through all these classes and do all this stuff to become the other. You will bounce so quickly out of carnality into spirituality based on what is happening on the outside. Again, you come out of church praising God. He had a great service. I was at the altar. I wept tears. Move of God. Get in the car and someone walks, drives out in front of you. They flip you the bird, but it's their fault, and then you just, you just lose it. Now, that's how quick... We left church in the spirit, but the minute something on the outside stimulated the emotions, we reacted. And you can react that quick. But you can also stop in the middle of the craziness that you're experiencing on the road. You can quickly stop because the spirit will recognize, whoa, 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 that's not the nature of the land. That's not who we are. We don't act like that. And you can go, you're right. And quickly go right back into the spirit and repent and turn around and don't go in the direction that you're going to go into. Like I said, you get ready to get into a fist fight with somebody. And all of a sudden the spirit says, what are you doing? And you're like, oh, whoa, no, dude, you're whatever. You win. It's not worth it. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this. Or you can just get in that fit of rage and let your emotions run wild and manifest that and get beat up or beat up or get thrown in jail or sued or what have you. It's not worth it. So... When you're, when you're taking your cues only from this guy who's being stimulated by all the outward stuff, that's not walking in the Spirit. 
Okay? It's when you turn to the Spirit and live out of who you really are is when you're walking in the Spirit. So let's put it this way. Walking in the Spirit is you recognizing who you really are. That's walking in the Spirit. The oneness that you have with God. So number two, the soul. Now look at Hebrews 4. <coughs> and look at verse 12. We looked at this verse before, but we're going to hit it again. For the word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing. Now why is this word quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword? And what is it piercing? And what is it, what is it dividing? What is the purpose to divide something? What is it? So they're not the same thing. In fact, if I was looking at that, being a new believer, I'd say something was wrong with the soul. Wouldn't you? If God has to use the word to divide soul from spirit. So oh, you, you, how many times have you read the Bible and go, oh my God, I didn't know that. What did God just do? He took you out of the soul life and showed you how to live the spirit life by whatever that one scripture was. Or you may be doing something and you really don't know that it's wrong that you're doing it. And God shows you it and gives you the grace to see it and to make a, make a you know, whatever you got to do to fix it. What he just simply did was he divided the soul from the spirit. So I know as a person, as a complete person, spirit, soul, and body, by the word of God, what is God and what is not God. That's what that word is. But see, that's, that's, the, that's only half of it. That's only 50% of it because there's another way to look at this scripture. So the word of God divides the false me, the real you. So when I look at that word, it tells me who I'm not. See, you look at those scriptures and it says, do not get angry. Oh, that's right. I, no, 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 no. He's saying that's, that, that anger is not who we are anymore. That word just divided this guy who loses his temper from this guy who has all patience in the world. So, so the word's going to divide. This is not us anymore. This is who we are. Okay? <laughs> So that, that's important, and we'll get back to that verse here down the road, hopefully, in a little bit. But there you have it. So the soul. The soul is, the, is in the process of transformation, meaning the soul still may be experiencing the aftermath of the fall, yet not completely transformed yet by the Spirit. So prior to conversion, your mind, emotions, and will was affected totally by the fall, living from the tree of knowledge and good and evil. So when the soul is living from the outside influences and non-renewed aspects of the mind... Paul refers to this as carnal or fleshly. So let's say I'm a believer, and yet I have I still have a mindset of uh, a racism. When Paul says there's no Jew, there's no Greek, there's no male, there's no female, all that gets fixed by realizing who you now are and what the truth of the matter is, and the mind still may be racist, a male chauvinist. Along those lines, because we've got a lot of that going on in the world today. So when you realize that, then you have to say that aspect of my life is carnal. It's unrenewed yet. Now, we're not condemning and we're not judging. We're simply saying you obviously don't have truth in that realm of your life yet. And once you realize, oh, wait a minute, God's not no respecter of person. He's, everybody's the same. And you can start making some adjustments and getting your mind renewed. And when you get your mind renewed in this, there are things right now you think and believe that God would designate as carnal, fleshly. Because truth has not gotten to that place yet to where it frees you. Because the knowledge of the truth does what? Sets you free. So once truth is revealed in any area of your life, the result is freedom. So there's still a lot of aspects. There's still a lot of mindsets that have not yet been fixed because truth has not yet gotten there. Now, there are probably a lot of areas in your life truth has gotten to that you've been delivered from and freed from. That's why this is, this is why we are saying that the soul is in a recovery mode. We are being recovered, fixed perfectly, and this part of us is being renewed in the recovery mode. A. When the, when the Bible refers to babes in Christ, it does not mean that the spirit is in a babe format or mode, but it means that you're a babe right here. A, lot, a new believer has a whole lot of territory 
where the enemy's camped out. I mean, they've not yet began into the school of Christ to know who they are. So there's a lot of minds th- mindsets and belief systems that have to be fixed. Because this soul is like a sponge. Before you got saved, the soul is still, even saved, the soul is still the sponge. It's going to take all the influences and inf- information and education from the world, or it's going to take its cues from the kingdom of God. And so even Christians will continue to build wrong mindsets if their focus is this way. And all God's trying to get us to do is be spiritual this way and get this thing renewed so that we can make a difference in the world and not be conformed to it. Number three, the spirit. Growth is you coming into who you are as a new man, which is, now watch, this is not growing. And these are three scriptures. I thought I I gave you these scriptures last week. Here they are. You are complete, Colossians 2.10. Now there's no debating that. That is black and white. You are complete in him. Now he's not talking about your soul, but he is talking about your spirit. What else? Perfect. By one perfect sacrifice, he has forever perfected you, and that's in Hebrews 10, 14. Let me read this to you out of a different translation. Listen to how this translation puts Hebrews 10, um, 14. Boy, if they can make this print any smaller. And by this one perfect sacrifice, talking about Jesus, what did it do? He made us perfectly holy and complete for all time. So you don't need worked on. The real you is perfect. You are perfectly holy. Now your mind and your emotions and your will is in a recovery mode. Now being transformed by what he did on the cross and who you really are. Lining up your soul to who you really are. So you can be a complete person here. Your whole life is this guy being transformed by your spirit. And these two becoming more and more acquainted with each other, change, transform, so that you can start manifesting this guy over here through this guy. And remember the valve. And we'll get to the valve next week, because next week we're going to talk about flesh versus spirit. You don't want to miss that one because it's huge. Okay, four, mindsets. Now, now here's where we're going to really take off. So this is where it's really going to hit you. And hopefully liberate you. Old mindsets. We have all we have all belief systems we were taught and influenced by education, media, entertainment. And as a man thinks, so he is. Proverbs twenty three seven tells us that. As a man thinks, so he is. We have been brought up with lies, deception, in essence, mind control from people. Now, so what we have to do once you get born again is everything you've been taught. You're gonna have to throw it away. You're going to have to say, you know what? <clears throat> Death, I have to die to it. It, 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 is, it, is, it is all wrong. It's because I'm a result. If anything, I am a result of a fall. This guy's a result of a perfect sacrifice. The soul is the result of the fallen man. So we've just got to say, you know what? His ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. And in 1 Corinthians 3, it says we now have the mind of Christ. So let's be renewed by that mind, by renewing our mind with the mind of Christ. Make sense? Now, old mindsets. I think that pretty much speaks for itself. And we may hit that again here in a minute, but I want to jump into the past hurts, number five. Because I had this happen, and I've had this happen over and over and over, being a pastor with people. <clears throat> you may not, but when you're, if, you're, if you're a counselor, if you're a pastor... You're going to come across people that have been raped, and they've never said nothing about it all their life, and they can't get beyond it. Incest, there have been people I've talked to whose stepfathers have, have, have raped them, and never, and never back, in, back in the days when it wasn't you know, so popular to be a victim today, and I'm not against being a victim, there are victims, but a lot, back in those days, you were looked at terribly if something like that happened to you. And so there are these people that can't get over that. So there are people, um, even people that are a result of a divorce. 
You're like, come on, man, the divorce was 50 years ago. Get over it. Well, they, it, it, effect is, it affects people differently, right? So they've got this, well, my mom and dad were divorced, or my dad beat me, or my dad abused me, or my mother did this, and my mother did that, or I had an absentee father. He was there, but he wasn't. And we got all this blame game going on, but nevertheless, you got hit. Your soul, because remember, the spirit's dead. You got hit with everything that came at you from the world, the flesh, and the devil. Your own parents hurt you. Your, your teachers probably abused you. Um, as a kid, you got HBO and watched R-rated movies, and now you're hooked on porn. I don't know what you went through. I have no clue. Remember back in the day, HBO and Showtime had all that crazy stuff? Well, my dad had everything, so I got to watch it all. But nevertheless, I'm affected by all of everything out here stimulating my mind, emotions, and will. Okay? Right? Then I had an uncle next door six years older than me that was into drugs and alcohol. And then at a very young age, I got influenced by him. And, it, and that kind of took a toll on my soul. Okay? So all this is, com I mean, this is... The enemy is winning, and I am one bad dude with all these crazy thoughts and all this crap going on. And then I get born again. Now the spirit starts working here. Okay? Starts transforming this. And I and there's a lot of change. Would you believe there's a lot of change that has to take place? From from but what the church does, church doesn't recognize. They, the church sees the soul and the spirit as the same thing, and then gives you all this outside thing to do to change him. Remember, you, this guy cannot get changed, the soul, cannot get changed by religion or worldly ways. That's why counseling doesn't work. All they're giving you to do is something to go home and try. Or, again, getting back to the past hurts. So you're sitting there in a counseling session, and God knows I've had my share of them, and it's like and this person is an onion, and you unlayer this only to find out there's something deeper. All right, so we'll deal with that. And then while they're talking, oh, God, I didn't know that. There's another layer. And I was talking to someone, and they're like, I just don't know who I am anymore. I'm just so confused. I don't know who I am, and I, I need to think this thing through, and I need to work on myself. And I'm sitting there thinking, wow, if you would be listening to this class, you would never say that. And I said, well, how, how can you say that? Because everybody's trying to fix themselves, trying to find themselves. How many guys out there have you dated girls? I just don't know who I am. Okay, you, that's just an excuse. But they, they believe it. They don't know who they are until they find another guy, and then they find out who they are. All of a sudden, they find out who they are. Now they know who they are. Uh, six days after they break up with you, say, I don't know who I am. It's not you, it's me. Well, in six days, you re what was the book you read that fixed you that quick? Now you know who you are. Back on top. No. But then, then when they finally do get real with themselves, they find out they don't know who they are. This guy is so screwed up in his thinking. This is why people keep making the same mistakes, date the same stupid guys, same, date the same stupid girls, and end up in the same stupid scenarios because they, they can't break through the cycle of thought. Their picker is broken. What's that? Their picker is broken. Their what? Picker. Their picker. 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 Pick the one out. Or yeah, pick right yeah, yeah. Never heard of that, but yeah. Oh, sorry. So, I just read Dr. Phil on that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. By the way, Dr. Phil works out of this realm here. Yeah. I know. Right. Hey, remember, the tree is good. Sounds good. Yeah. That's the deception of good. But Dr. Phil will never turn a person on to what Jesus did. And what he accomplished, and who you are is a, as a result of what he did. You're the perfect sacrifice. Work I, I out don't that. Watch it. I just heard somebody quote it one time. I thought it was funny. Well, we we're not condemning you for watching the field. No, I don't. Did you ask yourself how you feel? All right. So past hurts. So you try to talk to someone, and it is an onion, and it's unending because you may start at a, a bad relationship they had a year ago, and after about a year, you're now with them at five years old, at what their dad did. And it's like, it just doesn't stop. And then, it's what my mother did while I was in her womb. The things she spoke, and the fighting and everything. I was affected as a, as a <laughs> fetus. <laughs> when is this? So, it is an unending 
This is why counselors make a lot of money. They can't fix you. They just go in circles. Oh, they'll say things that sound good and things to go try. And believe me, you can fix this to some degree. You know, as a man thinks, so he is. I can brainwash somebody into thinking that they're better than what they used to be. And they can, they can benefit from me brainwashing them with a bunch of good stuff from this tree called motivation, self-help. But it, does, it doesn't come from what Jesus did. How do I know that God's not in that all that stuff? Is because the Spirit will not use anything worldly to fix you. You're already fixed, and what He will use is the cross, what Jesus did, and who you are now as a result of what He did is, on, is the only thing the Spirit will tell you. How do I know this? Because Paul said, when I'm among you, I determined to know nothing but Christ and what? Him crucified. Him crucified. The only answer to life is in the cross. Amen. That's it. And the Spirit will do nothing but work or reveal to you who you are as a result of what he did. you got to get that. Memorize that. Because that's the answer. So I don't have to... So I told this person, I said, Oh my God, let me tell you what you're... you're, you're you're where I can imagine you you in your head. You're wearing me out saying this stuff. Well, then how do I fix my you don't fix yourself? Alright, so how does a person get how does a person get different mindsets? Get rid of the old ones. How does a person get over past hurts? Let's go to the next one. Lost identity. Many proclaim I don't know who I am. Christians are like the walking dead, lost, totally controlled by the effects and the abuse by their abusers. Saints are confused about their sins and weaknesses, and yet they're saved. People are, they don't know who they are. I, am I an evil person? Am I a good person? Am I saved? Because look how I act. I might not be saved. They're, these are legitimate concerns shallow Christians have who have not been, shallow because they've not been taught. Not demeaning them, but they just haven't been taught. All right? And then what happens? Here's how you get rid of mindsets and past hurts and lost self-help. Let me give you a self-help book. Money's being made, number seven, money is being made off the hurts and pains of individuals. It's a money maker. Thank God you, you, you were abused as a kid. Now I got you in my office for the next two hours, $50 an hour the next two years. I'm making money off of your past pain and hurt. And Jesus said, freely, freely I give to you. I freely give you transformation and deliverance. Everybody out there has got a book, got a CD, got a school, got a counseling session. And Jesus says, I don't know which, the answer is not out here. The answer is already inside of you. The answer is you finding out who you already now are, the new you. And it's free. It's already been done 2,000 years ago. You don't even have to acquire it. You are it. All right, so how do I uh, go now? Now we'll stop there at transformation. So, how does this work? How do I get past the hurts and the pains and the how about fear? How do I get past fear, anxiety, insecurity, shame, guilt, condemnation, all the stuff that brings people into depression and frustration? How do I break those cycles? And we've got how to books, seven steps how to deal with fear, right? Six steps how to get over guilt. All oh, seven steps how to get healed. Because you can throw in their sickness, mental health, and you can throw in their bodily sicknesses. It's, it, how, how God delivers you from adultery is the same way he heals you from a sickness. It's the same principle, but, you, but a different thing. Now, I will show you. So I'm talking to this person, <clears throat> and if they would have asked me, would you counsel me? Because that's the onion, wanting to be unlaired. No, I'm not going to, I don't even want to know what's in that onion. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to know. I, I don't, I can't. I don't have that. No man can fix your onion. So what do you do? And this is what I said. You look to who Jesus is. Now that's too simple, isn't it? I got to have a book. And the thicker the book, the more, the more I get from it. Right? You just told me something I only got to buy a book for. Rather than sit there and deal with a person like an onion, you just say, don't even deal with the onion. You got to realize you're all messed up in your head, like all of us. Okay? Don't even deal with it. Just turn from it 
and look to Jesus. And when, when I say look, what do I mean? That means I have to know him. He's this way. He's that way. This is how he responds. This is who he is. And then all that time I'm learning Jesus, I'm finding out that's who I am. So how do I get rid of this guy or transform this guy? By looking at this guy, who I am. As he is, so am I. This kills religion. This kills all works. All you do is look to him. Now, you'll find these scriptures and go to transformation. Now, number eight, Romans 12, 2. You're transformed by the renewing of your mind. What are you renewing your mind with? More self-help garbage? No, because the Spirit's not using self-help garbage. The only thing the Spirit is doing is revealing to you who you are as a result of what He did. And if you can't seem to see that in the picture form, then just then go to this one. 2 Corinthians 3.18 Gaze on His beauty. Look to Him, and as you're looking to Him, you're also transformed. So how many times have you shared a story, some great story out of the Gospels that Jesus did? That's who you are. He gave you the Sermon on the Mount. I don't have to work hard for the Sermon on the Mount. I am the Sermon on the Mount. Hmm? Is Jesus... Well, what are some of the Sermon on the Mounts? Uh, <laughs> My mind's blank. He, oh gosh, I Meekness? <laughs> blessed are the meek. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed yeah. are the... Come on, what else? Huh? Pure in heart. Pure in heart. Look at her going for Matthew 5 real quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I was I'm kidding. kidding. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> we all have biblical trivia one night. Oh, God, make me more peaceful. Is that... Is that can, can you pray that now after learning all this? No, because I already am peaceful. Yeah. I have the... I'm one with peace. I, it's unbelief that makes me uneasy and not peaceful. Renew enough. Exactly. Remember what I said. The more you renew your mind, the more transformation happens Amen. here. Amen. But people won't even pick up their Bible to see what they look like. Amen. When's the last time you looked into the mirror? <laughs> well, you probably did. <laughs> no, you look in the mirror to see what you look like, and you've seen what you've looked like for the last 78 years. Yes, you look in the rearview mirror, and you're looking, you're like, oh, look at that wrinkle there. I, 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 what, what happened there? You know. Uh, we look in, how many times do, you, do we look in the mirror per day? And how many times do we look at our reflection in a glass walking downtown or somewhere or at the mall and like... <laughs> We're always looking at ourselves through the reflection of, of ourselves, right? But how many times are you looking at the Bible and seeing that's who you are? That's a reflection of who you are, is it what's in that word? We don't. Christians don't read their Bibles. So no wonder they don't know who they are. So what I was telling this person to fix all this stuff, and there's more. I mean, this is not mine, it's passwords, lost identity, and all that. It's not self-help. It's finding out who you already are. You don't need help. This guy does. You, you, you don't need help. The help is already there 2,000 years ago. You just need to re get this guy to know that, who he now is. And, and that's looking at the Word. Does that make sense? Now go to James chapter 1. Now this is a verse I struggled with for years. And it wasn't until just last year when we were teaching this that... Um, I shared this. Uh, James chapter 1, <clears throat> and look at verse 23. Well, let's start at verse... Let's start at verse 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness... Because that's not who you are. This is not, this is not religion or, or legalism. He's, he's, this, is, this is the word dividing spirit from soul. Lay aside filthiness... A naughtiness and receive with meekness, what? The engrafted word. So the word is the key here, which is able to not save you by way of regeneration, but deliver you. The word salvation is delivered there. But be ye doers of that word. See, it's an engrafted word that we are to do and not to hear. Now, why, why am I able to do this? And why is this not legalism? 
because I'm wired for obedience now. This guy can obey. So when he tells me to be a doer of the word, he's telling me, be who you already are. So I look at the mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? The, 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 the mirror is not going to ask that girl to change anything because she can't change the nose, the hair, the eyes, the, 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 the facial form of her cheek and chin and neck and the if she's got a long face or a round face, she can't change that stuff, right? If you're black, you can't be white. If you're white, you can't be black. So when you look into the mirror, the mirror is saying, this is who you are. So go be that person that you are. No time do you look in the mirror and walk away and, and act like another person that you didn't see in the mirror. Nobody does that. So you see yourself in the mirror and you go out and you act like what you saw. Because you can't change who you are, right? Now watch what he says here. Be ye doers of the word, verse 22, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, it's only because he did... He, well, let me just read him. He is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a mirror, and he beholds himself and goes away... And he forgets the kind of guy or what manner of man he is or was. So in other words, when you look at the word here and he says who you now are and who you aren't and who you are and you go out here and act like who it said you weren't, in the natural would be like you looking in the mirror and then walking away forgetting what kind of a guy that you were. So this is important why you need, this Bible is like a mirror. It reflects Jesus, who you are, as he is, so are we in this world. Now either we have to believe that or we don't. I'm not trying to become like Jesus, am I? No. I already am. It's the lies that I'm not that way now because there was a day I wasn't him. He still believes like I'm still fallen. Now he has to believe who I now am. Right? So, transformation. We are transformed by looking at Jesus. Who am I? The person says, I don't know who I am. Look at Jesus. Forget the onion. The onion gets fixed by itself as you're looking at Jesus and getting transformed by the renewing of your mind. The onion just goes away. You never have to peel it. You realize I don't have. You don't got to go back to your little stepdaddy, in, you know, raping you. You don't got to do that. You don't got to go back to there and, and relive that and talk about it. You don't got to go back and relive the rape in the back seat of the car. You don't got to do that. You just got to look at Jesus because that's who you are now. That person who got raped died. Born again, died. Why go back there and resurrect? what the world did to you with all your pain and suffering and it's legitimate pain and it's legitimate suffering I wouldn't want to have that happen to me there's things I've seen happen in people's lives God knows I wouldn't want to have happen to me but I have to see what Jesus did on that cross in reference to that thing that happened to me and he killed me so it has no more effect on me because I'm dead to it now I'm alive to him and now I am in him I am him and that is that is so not me anymore. Even the effects of that is not me. So how many people have identified themselves with their abuse or abuser? No matter what, no matter how it came down the pike at you. So you got to move on by looking at Jesus, not trying to fix this thing. See, these counselors want to take you back and relive it. Um, healing, healing, healing for the emotions, healing damaged emotions. Man, I'm dead to those emotions. They don't need to be healed. They need to die. How many times, have, how many books are out there back in the 80s and 90s healing damaged emotions, healing the inner man? No, he's dead. You're a new creation. God's not going to go back there. He's going to go forward and not back. Make sense? So, um, closing. One of the things, <clears throat> you may want to write this down, I don't think it's on your notes, <clears throat> introspection. You know how much time you spend on that? 
thinking about yourself. Too much. What's the word again? Introspection, where you look at yourself, you inspect yourself internally. You're always looking at your motives. You're always looking at your thoughts. You're always questioning this. It's introspection. Why do I do this? And if I fix that, it's just a constant, it's a narcissistic circus is what it is. It's all about you, and you're constantly thinking about you in reference to everything going on in life. And there's no need for that because I go to, go, I, I'm saving this verse. I was going to save this verse for Sunday morning, but you're going to get it to, you're going to get it both services. 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I was doing dishes this week. And um, I got a huge revelation. I had to stop and go, oh my God, I never saw that. And I'm like, wow. Wow. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And this is a verse you know. I'm going to, I'm going to re, I'll re-hit it Sunday, to, uh, Sunday morning, too, because I was saving it for Sunday morning. It's my main text Sunday morning, but I'm going to throw it at you. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Now look at verse 2. We've already referenced this, but watch. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified, Right? Now, I'm doing my dishes this week, and I'm, just, I'm not even, th- you know, just doing my thing, <clears throat> and this verse comes to me, and I know it was God because the way it came, and the distinction he made, and I'm like, I'm, I, I, oh my God, and I'm like, I am guilty of this. this. Now, what have we been doing all year long, not 1918, 2018, the cross? Is that what it says here? I determined that nothing but Christ and Him crucified, right? And I've never saw what comes before and crucified. See, and in the English, what is and? What kind of a word is and? It's a conjunction. Huh? So if I say, here's my keys and my drink, are these the same thing? No. And is a conjunction. Remember, what's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. Yeah. It's bringing bringing two two separate things together. So, what's the what comes before the crucifixion? In this, I determine on nothing. Forget Christ crucified. Forget the crucifixion. What's he saying? What's the other thing he's saying when he comes among you? He only wants to talk about and know about. Jesus Christ. That's it. And that, I don't know if that, that may not do nothing to you, but I'm like, wow, watch Sunday morning and you'll see what I got from that. All I want to say to you tonight with that is that the focus has to be a person. Now forget the cross, as important as that is, and that's why he also adds the cross, not just, what, not just Jesus, but what he did. But we're always talking about what he did or what he can do for you, but we never just talk about him as the bridegroom. He says, when I come among you, all we're going to do is we're going to talk about Jesus. We ain't talking about nothing else but Jesus. So what should our focus be? On ourselves? Did he say, I determine nothing among you but what you're doing and what you're about, what you think? You never go to a Bible study when the, the teacher says, now what do you all think this verse means? Oh my God. Really? You're going to ask somebody who's never had their nose in the Bible tell you what that verse means? No, that's not how you have a Bible study. You talk about Jesus. If the scriptures do not promote Jesus, then you're looking at those scriptures wrong. You, and, if you, and if you've got a pastor or a teacher teaching something that you can't see Jesus in the teaching then he's using it for his own sordid gain or your gain. But you can give, because that's not how it works. God is all about his son. And we need to be all about his son. So I don't, I'm not doing any introspection, because it's not about me. Why do I do this? Oh, stop it. You, you will never figure out why you do that. 
There goes the onion. Just turn to him and see who you now are. And don't try to, don't even try to stop doing the things that you're doing that's wrong. That's legalism. That's religion. Here comes the rules. Do, do this. Don't do that. No, no, no. I look at him and get transformed. I just don't do that stuff anymore by not even trying. That's truly resting in who I now am as I look to him. You've really, this is where faith comes in. You really got to believe you are as he is. Or you're going to be battling this thing. You're going to be battling old mindsets, past hurts, lost identity, with all the self-help the church can throw at you. And it never works. <coughs> and there's a whole lot more, like I said, guilt, shame, inferiority complex. Well, I was born on the wrong side of the tracks. Well, where did you hear that at? My, well, I'm not this, I'm not that. I don't live in Bridgeport, I live in Clarksburg. So already we've made a distinction. Well, who made that? Who, who said that? Huh? You know, I did not even know. I lived in Clark. I didn't grow up in this area. I grew up in Fairmont. And I did not know the distinction between Clarksburg and Bridgeport. And I've lived here since 1990 and still didn't know it until I dated a girl from Bridgeport. And I saw it. And I'm like, I, you, you guys are killing me. The little remarks and all the things about Clarksburg. I'm like, who? I didn't know this, 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 this identity was going on between two cities. And they, they, I, I don't want to divide, but there's people that don't think very highly of us. Simply because where I live. Well, who? They, don't, they must not know who I am. I'm royalty. And I'm not defined by where I live. Are you? If you are, sad for you. Are you defined by what car you drive? Are you defined by what manner or house you live in? Are you even defined by what job you have? Do you know why most people won't work at McDonald's who, won't have, who don't have a job? Ego. Pride. It's not about the money, is it? I thought work was about money. They'll go without work. When it's, when, do you, I don't know, but do you realize that McDonald's will let you pick your hours, what days you want off, and then you, you go there and put the time in and be about God outside the rest? That's not, you're not defined by flipping hamburgers. You're defined by who you are in Him. So my, I don't have an inferiority complex. I'm not rich enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not talented enough. That does not matter in the equation of God anymore. What matters is who you are in Him and what He's called you to. I mean, I, I was going to share this, and I said, no, that's kind of making fun, but I'm not making fun, but I'm going to share it. When I worked at Channel 46, I was about 18, 19 years old, when I first, 18 when I first started there. We had a guy come in there. He wasn't all there. And many of you may know him because I, you, you, go, you went to the church, he, churches that he went to, so you may know him. I, didn't, I don't even know his name, so don't even ask. can't remember. I just thought of his name. <laughs> anyway, don't ask. It's not the point. He's not all there. Okay, and he would we would let him come up and help out in, in different things. Okay, and I knew as an 18 year old there's something wrong with that guy, but he's a nice guy and he wants to help, so we let him come up in there and do some stuff. He got baptized in the Holy Spirit, he got on fire for God. So we're all in a prayer meeting or prayer circle. The staff got together and we're praying, and he begins prophesying, and I go, "That's not him. That is, that's not him." And, and the gift of prophecy was on him, and it, the stuff that was coming out of his mouth bypassed his IQ. And what a lesson for me as a kid, and thought, wow, you are no respect. You can, you, you, you can use anybody and override any inability, any IQ, any, if that's, if it's, because it's, it's not about you, it's about the call that overrides you. He'll equip you. Your sufficiency is of him, not what you're born with. And he'll use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And I sat there and I went, and we, people even talked, whoa, that's crazy. That's God. And I, I, and I just, I get excited just thinking about that. So, closing. Our focus is on the Spirit, our Spirit, the Word, and the Holy Spirit that gives us the revelation and understanding. And that's why we pray Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. 
It's our continual prayer. God, open, open the eyes of my understanding so that I may know who I already am in you, which is the riches that I have, the wisdom, the strength, the power, the anointing is all there, and who I am or who I am not. My IQ, my all that is not does not play into that anointing over here and what I'm called for. So you're not limited. In fact, when you're born again, all limits are off. You're unlimited. The only limitation you have is maybe God doesn't want you to do it. So no longer should you live a life of limits and boundaries. But my God is able to do above and beyond what I can ask or think. And all things are possible to them that believe. So all limits off. We limit God by identifying with this unrenewed man over here who's not fully recovered. The outer man. I need to identify with who I am in Christ. Does anybody have any questions? Comments? Yeah, right. Yes. We were talking about the onion. Well, uh-huh. I was telling Brenda over a month ago, I said, when I first came here, I felt like an onion. Not for the reasons you talked about. Right, but right, all right. The lies that I grew up hearing from the church I was going through mm-hmm. and everything. And every time I come here, it was like more layers was being peeled off. It is so green. You, I just feel like a totally different person now. Yeah. 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 And you know, there's so many excuses in this realm here we could use. Oh, because of this happened, that happened. I'm this way because of that. There. No, 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 no. This is who we are. There's no more excuses for this guy here. This unrenewed guy, which is your mind. It's not like two guys live, but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> this, this mind, emotions, and will is now being recovered with this new creation because this is the result of the fall now it now we need to recover from the result of the fall by lining up with who we are so my focus is here not who my focus can't be my mind emotions and will i i just i don't want to know about me anymore i'm too messed up i can't fix myself and i don't know why i think what i think and if i thought of a reason why i thought of that that thought's wrong as well as that one it's jekyll who can't fix hyde they both got to go away by looking to the new man. And Jekyll and Hyde will eventually just go off into the sunset and you become who you really are. Any more questions or comments? Um, the thing you gotta be prepared for once you realize you're in the spirit is acceptance around you. What is it? Because the acceptance around you, when you really you know, permeate that from yourself, People around you just start acting weird because they, they have no idea what's going See, on. See, <laughs> that, that, is, that is a perfect, perfect point. So check this out. What he's saying is, I'm going to be this guy. Now what we have is another guy that I'm relating to who also has a spirit, soul, and body, right? So I'm living out of my spirit he isn't, and so he is going to get offended with me by his unrenewed soul because my spirit is coming out of him through my soul, and he's getting offended at me because he doesn't know what you know. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, so be prepared because and they're all tacked. It's been a, a, a revelation film last couple years for me. What's that? It's, a, it's been a real revelation film. Yes. The last year or two for me. Uh huh. As you know. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Um, this is why, again, don't be unequally yoked. Because here you are trying to be the real you, and this Christian can't figure out who they are. I don't know who I am. And you don't want to mess with that person. They're just going to bring you down. Now, you can be friends, and you can don't go into business with them, and don't marry them. You can marry them later once you teach them how, to know, how they know. Don't marry someone who's not here with you. Don't use, your, don't use your marriage as the training ground. Use the dating as the training ground. Get them to where you, get them to where you are, then marry them. Don't, don't, don't burn your marriage out discipling the person like that. 
That's what, the, that's what the dating part is for, is to disciple them. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. And if you're dating someone who will never get on board with this, then they got to go. I don't care how much you love. Well, see, what you love them with those emotions, and I can't live without them because that's what your mind says. So your will's locked in and meshed in with them, and now you're stuck with them because you you're living out. No, no, you you should be so strong in this spirit, man, that you recognize they're not on board. They never will be. I love you. See ya. <coughs> that's hard. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. It's not hard. And the reason why you make it hard is because you don't love God the way that you ought to. Which, which Sunday mornings are about. Do you realize if you, if you really fell in love with God, no one would come near that relationship you have with God? But because it is so general, so average, that you let other lovers in and get you off of what God, where God and you are. It's not like people backslide and drift and is because they just you wait till Sunday morning. I, I I'm so tempted to well, you know, wait a minute, how much time? It's only seven o'clock. I, I got another hour. I got another hour by this clock here. I can do my Sunday morning message. Any other questions or comments? I won't go any further because that's what Sunday's about. Sunday's well, huge. I guess, Sunday's I guess huge. Sunday is really set up for the renewal of our spirit every week. Yeah. That's it, it, every time we get together, it's about. I don't think that's how man. Sunday got picked, but. <laughs> yeah, probably not. It's very nice. Any, anything else? That was a good point, by the way. I'm glad you because because you because you're going to come across that you're going to be this way, and people are like, I don't understand you, and they're going to attack you because because the, the the soul and the flesh needs to be divided, and if they haven't divided theirs, they're going to come at you full speed, full full throttle. Okay, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for opening our eyes. We don't know everything. We're not here claiming that we know it all. But, Lord, we're on our way. At least we're pressing forward to, to get revelation into who we are as a result of what you did. We want to know the new man. We want to know the real us. Religion has lied to us. Religion has deceived us. Religion, is, religion has us on a performance treadmill, reading books, buying CDs, and going to sessions and counseling and programs. They're killing us. They're killing the new man by trying to fix the soul with worldly outward things. And that is not what the Spirit is doing. There is no way that's what the Spirit... The Spirit is only going to reveal to you Jesus. The Spirit will only show you Jesus and reveal to you what he did and show you who you are as a result of it. That's why Paul kept using the term in Christ, in Christ. We're in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. It's all about being in him, being found in him, and getting our identity from being in him. As he is, so are we in this world. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.